Hello, we welcome you to our program today. The sermon this morning is titled, Polluted Offerings. The title is taken from Malachi 1, 6 to 14. We'll be studying from the New King James Version. And so if you will, please turn in your Bibles to Malachi chapter 1. The Lord sent his prophet Malachi to speak. A prophet is a spokesman. A prophet of the Lord, in this case, Malachi, is the spokesman for the Lord God. Malachi 1 and 1, the burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. Malachi attempted to turn the Jews from sin to return in faith in the Lord. The Lord loved Israel. We see this from the first chapter, Malachi 1 and 2, where the Lord said, I have loved you. While the Lord loved Israel, this was a truth denied, sadly, by the people, as we see through their actions and inactions. Malachi continues to rebuke the people of Israel, especially their priests, Malachi 1, 6 to 14. Malachi 1 and 6, our first point, honor God our Father. Malachi wrote, A son honors his father, and a servant his master. If then I am the father, where is my honor? And if I am a master, where is my reverence? Says the Lord of hosts. To you priests who despise my name, yet you say, In what way have we despised your name? The priests served by giving offerings. Yet the Lord said through Malachi that the priest despised his name. They denied it by saying, in what way have we despised your name? It was generally the case that a son honors his father and a servant honors his master. In fact, the children of Israel were given the commandment of the Lord by Moses to honor their father and their mother. Exodus 20 and verse 12. Moses said that the Lord was their father in Deuteronomy 32 and 6. Malachi questions whether the people truly believed that God was their father and their master. He argued that if the Lord is your father, then why do you not honor him? If the Lord is your master, why then do you not have reverence for him? According to Malachi, the priest despised the name of the Lord, yet, as is so often the case, the priests of Israel denied it. A question for us today. Do we honor God as our Heavenly Father? I know from Jesus in the model prayer, his prayer, he taught his disciples to pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. But do we honor God as our heavenly Father? After exhorting the brethren to sing with grace in their hearts to the Lord in Colossians 3, 16, Paul wrote in verse 17, And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord, Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father through him. Colossians 3.17. And so this Paul, the apostle, taught the Christians at Colossae to worship God, to worship him in singing. And so they were to sing. And according to verse 17, to do so by his authority. And whatever they did in word or deed to do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. And so again, we ask the question, do we honor God as our heavenly father? Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things that I say to do? And so this is much the point that we see here in Malachi 1 and verse 6. Malachi 1 and 6, honor God, our Father. Verses 7 and 8, worship God in truth. Verse 7, he says, 
you offered defiled food on my altar. But say, in what way have we defiled you? By saying, the table of the Lord is contemptible. According to the Lord, they despised his name. Verse 6. They despised his name by offering defiled food on his altar. They denied it, of course, by saying, In what way have we defiled you? By offering defiled food on his offer, altar, they, by their actions, were saying that his altar, the table of the Lord, was contemptible. The food in this passage, where he says, offer defiled food, the food was the sacrifice offered by the priests on the altar, made by fire. The Lord had said by Moses in Ezekiel 44 and 7, when you offered my food, the fat and the blood. And so speaking of the various sacrifices that they were instructed to offer under the law of Moses. Leviticus 21 and 6, he says, they shall be holy to their God and not profane the name of their God. For they offer the offerings of the Lord made by fire and the bread of their God, therefore they shall be holy. In this context, the table of the Lord is the altar of the Lord. The priest offered defiled or polluted food on the altar. Yet again, the, the priests of Israel denied defiling the Lord, saying, in what way have we defiled you? Well, by defiling the altar, they defiled the Lord himself. By their actions, they were saying that the whole of the worship of the Lord was contemptible. What made the offering that they offered defiled? Well, there were certain restrictions and commandments concerning the offerings. And by offering something foreign to those commandments or those restrictions, we see that they offered a defiled offering, defiled food or sacrifice in this case. It's much like we saw back in Colossians 3 and 17, whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. And so by offering the Lord defiled food or something contrary to his law, we see that they were saying of the whole worship of God, that it was contemptible. We want to note that the Lord is deserving of honor and respect. The priests of Israel offended God by their lack of respect for the necessity of proper offerings upon the table of the Lord. Again, verse 6, a father has respect, a master has reverence. Where is my respect? Where is my reverence? If I am your father, if I am your Master, then where is my honor? Where is my respect? Where is my reverence? Verse 8, and when you offer the blind as a sacrifice, is it not evil? And when you offer the lame and the sick, is it not evil? Offer it then to your governor. Would he be pleased with you? Would he accept your offering? Would he accept you favorably, says the Lord of hosts? They despised the name of the Lord by offering defiled food on his altar. The Lord said that they did evil by offering the blind, the lame, and the sick on his altar. If they denied that it was evil, would they be willing to offer it to their governor? Their governor would not be pleased, and neither is the Lord. The priest of Israel failed to give God the very best, attempting to offer to him that which was of little value to them. The law of Moses defined the offerings which were accepted and not accepted. Look at passages like Leviticus 22, 17 to 33. Under the law of Moses given to the Jews, the children of Israel, the offerings brought to God were to be without blemish, verse 19. And they were to be without defect, in verse 20. In verse 21, the Lord said, it must be perfect to be accepted. And so as Moses gave the word of the Lord, he taught that 
the offering must be perfect, without blemish, without defect, in order to be accepted. They were to offer the very best. Perhaps to cut cost or out of greed, some were relaxing regulations concerning the offerings. And so they began to change the worship. The priest offered the blind and the lame and the sick as sacrifices. Why? Well, these were cheaper sacrifices, cheaper to them. It would cost them less. Somehow they deceived themselves into thinking perhaps this would be accepted to God as though he was required to accept it. Sometimes people today will offer worship to God as Christians in but the attitude, well, it's my worship. God will accept it. Malachi asked then, is it not evil? If you think it's not evil, he said, offer to your governor. Offer to some person in some high up position of, of honor. Would he be pleased with you? No, he would not be pleased. You ought to offer your very best. Do so out of respect and reverence. If the governor would not accept them favorably, then why should the Lord accept them? Deuteronomy 15, 21, in the law, we see it says, but if there is a defect in it, if it is lame or blind, if it has any serious defect, you shall not sacrifice it to the Lord your God. And in Leviticus 22, in 22, those who are blind or broken or maimed, and then he goes on to say, uh, you shall not offer to the Lord nor make an offering by fire to them on the Lord. And yet, what did they do? The Lord said, is it not evil? It was contrary to what he had commanded them. Where was his reverence? Where was his respect? There are those who act without reverence or respect for God today, substituting for worship what is inferior, what is unscriptural. Yet, as Israel, they denied that they did anything wrong at all much like people sometimes do today. They act as though God should be pleased with whatever they have to offer him. As Christians today, are we offering our very best of worship and service to God? If not, why not? And if not, why would we think that God would be pleased with such offering? John 4, 23 and 24, Jesus said, but the hour is coming and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. And so as Christians today, we're taught to worship God in spirit and truth. And so worship him in spirit or according to the correct attitude, an attitude of reverence and, and respect, and secondly, do so in truth. The truth according to his word. What has he asked? What has he, he instructed us to do? Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord. Colossians 3.17. Again, if not, why not? Three, serve as an example. Verses 9 to 11. Verse 9, he says, but now entreat God's favor, that he may be gracious to us. While this is being done by your hands, will he, not, will he accept you favorably, says the Lord of hosts? If you think that your service is good, then entreat God's favor that he may be gracious to us. As long as you continue to do this service the way and attitude you are doing, will God accept you favorably? Malachi's exhortation is one of irony. If you really think that God will accept you favorably with what you have offered, then entreat his favor. Make your earnest request for his grace and compassion. Backing up to the passage, he says, but now entreat God's favor that he may be gracious to us. And so, his exhortation is one of ironing. We know from the passage that their worship was not acceptable, was not pleasing in God's sight. 
Malachi teaches the truth. While you continue to offer defiled sacrifices, is it true that God will accept you favorably? The implied answer is no. To offer such sacrifices would be to do so in vain. Again, where's the reverence? Where's the respect? Do the will of God. If you profess him to be Lord, then obey him as, as Lord. If you accept him as your father, then give him that respect. If you accept him as your master, then give him that reverence. Psalm 40, 6 to 8. Psalm 40 and verses 6 to 8. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire. My ears you have opened. Burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not require. Then I said, Behold, I come in the scroll of the book. It is written of me. I delight to you do your will, O, o my God, and your law is written in my heart. What God truly wanted was their trust and obedience, that by faith they would follow him. And while they were instructed to offer the offerings, as instructed by the law given by Moses to the children of Israel, how were they doing so? In what way? What attitude? And in what way were they doing so? Well, we see their lack of respect, and we see their disobedience, even in the offerings. Instead, they ought to have had his law written in their hearts and delighted to do his will, as we saw in Psalm 40 and verse 8. Verse 10, who is there even among you who would shut the doors so that you would not kindle fire on my altar in vain? I have no pleasure in you, says the Lord of hosts nor will I accept an offering from your hands. Like we said back in verse 9, the answer, the question of, of exhortation was a matter of irony. They were not accepted. Here in verse 10, is there anyone among you who would stop offering vain worship to God? As, as it were, the Lord had no pleasure in them. He would not accept their, their offerings. Malachi expresses the desire that there would be someone among them who would shut the doors to the altar to keep out such offerings. It would have been better to have no offerings at all, no worship at all, than to have their contemptible practices and disrespect. Can you imagine a people giving God worship, offering these offerings to him? Supposedly out of reverence and respect, but without any reverence, without any respect doing so out of, out of contempt. How would God feel? What should he do? The fire was the fire of the altar that would consume the sacrifice. To light the fire in vain was to offer empty sacrifices, which God, of course, would not be pleased with, nor would he accept. Matthew 15, 8 and 9, Jesus rebuked the Pharisees, and he said, these people, quoting from the old law, or from the prophet, these people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. And so let's have delight in the word of God, be content to follow him in his, his way, and do so with the right spirit and according to the truth. Verse 11 for from the rising of the sun, even to its going down, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. In every place, incense shall be offered to my name, and a pure offering for my name shall be great among the nations, says the Lord of hosts. The name of the Lord, he says, will be great among the Gentiles. The Lord will be worshipped by people of the nations. Malachi the prophet prophesizes of a future time under the Messiah. The name of the Lord will be great among the nations. Through the preaching of the gospel to people of every nation, there will be people who worship God around the world. For example, the Great Commission given by Jesus to give to the people of the gospel, to the Jews and also to the Gentiles, go into all the world and preach the gospel to 
every creature. He who believes and is baptized shall be saved. He who does not believe shall be condemned. Mark 16, 15, and 16. And so they were to take the gospel into every nation, preaching and baptizing and, and continue to preach, to teach his word, making disciples of every nation. John 4 and 21, uh, the same context of the passage that teaches Jesus taught us to worship in spirit and truth. Jesus said to the woman, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. And so the idea here that he would not just be worshipped in Jerusalem or one certain place, he'd be worshipped around the world. As Christians, as a Christian today, are, are you worshipping, are you serving as an example to others? The Jews, the children of Israel, ought to have been a, an example to the nations around them ought to have been an example to the Gentiles. However, look at how they disrespected God with their disobedience. As Christians today, are we serving in such a way that sets a good example for those around us, those outside the, the church of, of Jesus Christ to see and to follow? Number four, worship God in spirit. Verses 12 to 14. Malachi wrote, But you profane it. In what way? And that you say, The table of the Lord is defiled, and its fruit, its food is contemptible. And so the name of the Lord, he says, will be great among the Gentiles. Verse 11. However, for Israel, who he rebuked, the name of the Lord was not great. They profaned it. And so by their actions, they showed that they really didn't hold him to be great, and so they profaned it with their actions. They despised his name by offering defiled food on his altar, and by doing so showed that his worship was contemptible. The priests of Israel, who were to offer these offerings for the people to God, uh, the priests of Israel among the nations ought to have been an example of respect and reverence in their devotion to the Lord. Yet, instead, what did they do? They profaned it. The priests did not actually say the Lord or the table of the Lord is defiled, contemptible. However, they said by their actions that the table was defiled and contemptible. They offered defiled food on the altar of the Lord. Malachi 1 and verse 7. This ought to be a warning for believers today. There are those who offer worship, which is to them empty, done superficially, done mechanically or by rote, lacking in any interest or any enthusiasm for the Lord. Again, where is the reverence? Where is the respect? As Christians, is our worship as it ought to be, offered out of respect and reverence to God, or is it about pleasing ourselves? Do we do what we do in worship today as Christians because it feels good to us? That people like it? Or do we do so because it is what God wants? Hopefully, we put God's will first ahead of our own. Surely, we can enjoy worship. But the first and foremost responsibility is to worship God. It's not about pleasing ourselves. Verse 13, he says, You also say, Oh, what a weariness! And you sneer at it, says the Lord of hosts. And you bring the stool and the lame and the sick, and you bring an offering, lest you bring an offering. Should I accept this from your hands, says the Lord? And so God attempts to reason with the people through Malachi, his prophet. What do you think? Should I accept this from your hand? Well, some of them were denying that they were doing anything wrong. Some today might say, well, he should accept whatever I have to offer him. The priests of Israel say of the offering, oh, what a weariness. For the priests of Israel, their service had become weariness, and they sneered at it. 
they not only brought defiled offerings, but we see that they thought of it as a burdensome chore, which they held in contempt. Should the Lord accept suffer offer, such offerings? Again, the priests of the Lord say in the offerings, oh, what weariness. Uh, some versions read, oh, how tiresome it is, or what a burden. Instead of their worship becoming one of joy and honor for their service, they find their work a burdensome chore. 1 John 5 and 3, the Apostle John wrote, For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. For his commandments are not burdensome. If the people of Israel in the time of Malachi loved the Lord as their father, their heavenly father, then his commandments would not have been burdensome or grievous. They would be a, a time of joy that they could offer them to God. And so here we see in the passage that they sneer at it. Oh, what a weariness, and you sneer at it. This is defined as to smile or to laugh with a, with a facial contortion. You know, you can picture someone's face who is sneering, how they contort their face in such a way which expresses their scorn or their contempt. A current expression, an idiom today is to turn up the nose. This is also an expression of contempt. And so the people were, they were turning up their nose at the offering of the Lord, at the table of the Lord. Some versions read sniff or snort. And so they sneered at it, they sniffed at it, they snorted at it. Adam Clark in his commentary, he wrote that this sniffing or snorting is a metaphor taken from cattle which do not like their fodder. And so the idea of them sniffing at it or snorting at it as if to, to express their, uh, their contempt for the food and not wanting to eat that fodder. Uh, that could be the idea behind the passage. Uh, the New King James reads sneer. Basically, again, we see the idea of them expressing scorn or contempt to turn up the nose at the worship of God. To the blind, to the lame, and the sick. Malachi now adds the stolen. And so, as the Lord had condemned stealing, and Exodus 20 and 15, as the Lord spoke through Moses to tell the people of Israel, to command them, to give them the Ten Commandments, and one of which you shall not steal, Exodus 20 and 15, surely that would not be acceptable to God. And yet here we see that there were some, presumably, who had not only offered the lame and the sick as their offerings, but they had offered, often offered a, a sacrifice that had been stolen from someone. <laughs> it's... It's amazing. It's amazing to see. Would God find this acceptable? Should he accept this from your hand? The implied answer here is no, he should not. How many today presume upon the favor of God? Some have this attitude that God will be gracious and forgive me as if it is his job. He'll forgive me. Or perhaps looking at God as Father and our Heavenly Father and saying, well, He's our Father. He'll forgive me. God does love us, and He is expressed in the Bible as our Father, our Heavenly Father in the New Testament. But certainly we should not presume upon His grace and offer Him offerings of worship which are not acceptable in His sight, which are contrary to His Word, His will, or to do so in a way that is contemptible, without respect or reverence. So no, do not presume upon his grace. How many people today do so? If this is the case, then certainly they ought to, to think about that, to repent, to change. Verse 14, Malachi continues, he says, But cursed be the deceiver, who has in his flock a male, 
and takes a vow and but sacrifices to the Lord what is blemished. For I am a great king, says the Lord of hosts, and my name is to be feared among the nations. Earlier he said, you would not offer such a sacrifice to your governor. Why then would you offer this to God? In this passage here, he says, I am a great king. Who are we doing this to? Malachi, here in verse 14, taught how that such people were deceivers. How they lied to God. They lied to themselves. They lied to others. They had what they needed to offer God according to the law, and yet they took a vow and made a promise to keep, and yet they didn't keep it, or at least they kept it with some inferior offering, some defiled sacrifice, polluted offering. They offered something else instead. They kept the best for themselves. Malachi described he who would do so as a deceiver. Uh, he, he was hypocritical. He claims that he does not have to offer, and then he offers less than what he could have offered. His problem was not a problem of poverty, though he, he lacked. His problem was a problem of greed. He placed personal gain ahead of God's worship. He possessed a male, according to the law of Moses, in Leviticus 1, 3 to 10, as required, and yet God was given blemish to animals instead as offerings and sacrifice. What do we learn from this today? From the passages in Malachi chapter 1. We are taught in verse 6 to honor God our Father. 7 and 8 to worship God in truth. 9 to 11 to worship God as an example to others. And in verses 12 to 14 to worship God in spirit. If we believe that God is our Heavenly Father, then we ought to respect and reverence Him as our Heavenly Father. We show our respect and reverence for God by being content to worship Him in truth according to His Word. As we serve, praising the name of the Lord as great, others will see our example. Worship God in spirit, sincerely and earnestly, with the right attitude. To summarize what we see here in Malachi in his teachings of this book, Malachi deals with people who were tired of serving God. He deals with people who offered to him, to God, defiled sacrifices. No early ruler would have accepted, no earthly ruler. They profaned his name by disdaining the table of the Lord and became weary of following his words. They did not stand in awe of God's name. Therefore, they caused many to stumble by their example and their faulty instruction. They were leading uh, not only the priests, but the priests were leading other people in this kind of disobedience and lack of faith and respect to God. Exodus 23 and 19, the priests were taught to bring the first fruit, the first of the first fruit of their land, land of the people. The table of the Lord became contemptible to them, even though they knew what they were to do. Yet they did not seek God first. They did not hit, put him first. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 33, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. I want to end the program today by looking at Christians and worship. Various passages describe the practices of the early church, such as in Ephesians 5, 19, and Colossians 3 and 16. How that the early Christians sang as worship to God. In 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17, how Paul taught his Christian brethren to pray without ceasing. And in Acts 2 and 42, we see how the apostles taught the people, how they were preaching the gospel of Christ, and how they continued in the apostles' doctrine. Hebrews 10 and 25, how that we ought to edify one another. And 1 Corinthians 16 and 1 and 2, an example of Christians giving as they were prospered. 
And in 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 26, we see Paul's teaching on the Lord's Supper, instituted by the Lord himself, remembering with thanksgiving the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for our sins. Acts 20 and verse 7, we see how the early church observed the Lord's Supper, how they broke bread each first day of the week. Let's never worship by rote. Let's never go through the motions. Let's give God the reverence and respect that he's due as our Heavenly Father and worship him appropriately in spirit and in truth. Until next time, God bless.